grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace. To start our worship service, I love the spirit and the lilt to all that. Thank you this morning, and good morning, everyone. We have um, some folks with blankets here. 35 of our youth had a sleep-in last night, and I guess a few of you slept, right? Okay, we used to call those stay-ins, or oh no, lock-ins, that's what they're called, right? So, great to have you here at the early service. We usually see them at the late service. And um, I do want to make a few quick announcements that we have flowers here today. And they are for the, from the Madsen family in memory of Dale and Adele's son, Mike, who passed away about 15 years ago. So keep them in your prayers as they remember Mike. I also want to update you on Audrey and Paul Brosty. Perhaps some of you know they were in a car accident um, on the Hanska Road, and Audrey was airlifted up to HCMC. She had surgery on her ankle, but I talked to them yesterday, and I'm, I'm going to go up there this afternoon, and she's doing fine. She's going to have a long recovery, um, but appreciate your prayers, and Paul's, Paul's a little shook up too. And uh, some of you have asked also about Doc Ellenson, who was in the hospital and was also then brought to the cities, but he is home, and he's resting comfortably. He needs some rest, um, um, but he is back in New Ulm now and glad to be here. So feel free to uh, connect with them maybe in a couple days as, as they rest up. Um, keep them in your prayers. I'm going to quickly um, let you um, know about something in our bulletin as well from your council, from our council. Um, I, I need to draw our attention to our December finances. On Tuesday, we got these results in um, the council, and some years we do great. Some years we're a little short. This year, our December was short, and I'm deciding to share that with everyone so you can help out. These things happen. We actually had to cancel the Sunday school program, which will be uh, at the 1030 service this morning. So we had some canceled services, lower attendance due to weather. But we can all, if we can all pitch in a little extra here in January, we'd like us to get caught up. We had funds to cover this. However, uh, it'll affect us in the future. So if you can give a little extra this month or can increase a little extra over the year, we've got a sheet for you and there's an automatic giving sign up too. Please prayerfully consider how you can help so we can keep on track and keep trusting in God to do all his good work for us here at Our Saviors. It's time for us to turn to worship and our opening hymn, and I invite you to stand as we join together in hymn number 314. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, be with you all. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Please take a moment for silent confession. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit. We may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now because of the forgiveness and grace of Jesus Christ, who went to the cross and died for us, you are forgiven of all your sins in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit, hold us forever. 
that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you all. So let's share words of welcome and peace with one another. And please note, if you don't want to shake hands, that's okay in this cold and flu season. Please be seated for our anthem. Today's lesson is from Isaiah. We will read the uh, lesson responsively with the congregation reading the verses in bold print. Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 7. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me.
And he said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves. Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the singing of the gospel acclamation printed in your bulletin. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, Where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. And it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. And one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon of John and you are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I think we have a few children with us. Almost everyone is going to be at the next service for the Christmas program, but do I have some children who would come up and help me out with our children's message? I see Noah and... Anybody else? Well, we've got lots of children in this whole place, right? So thank you, Noah, for coming up, and you'll get a good view of this. How are you feeling? You had some uh, medical stuff this week with your teeth, didn't you? You feeling better? Good. Glad you're here. So I want to show you a picture of somebody that's important, and we don't talk about him very much. This is a picture of what John the Baptist might have looked like. 
He's kind of got a big hairy beard, and he's kind of wearing a funny uh, hairy garment, and he looks kind of like a, a mountain man, doesn't he? But John the Baptist was important, so let me read to you about him. Zechariah and Elizabeth's baby, John, grew up. He lived in the desert. His clothes were made of camel's hair. He wore a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild honey. And he told the people about God. He also told them that a special man would come soon, Jesus, the Son of God. So even though he dressed kind of weird and he ate weird food, John the Baptist was very important. In fact, my father-in-law, my husband's father, my husband's right over there, and so are my two, my niece and my nephew. One's my godson, and they're visiting, Kirsten and Nate. They're visiting from Omaha there, and his wife, Barb, and, um, and Corey. I'm pointing you guys out. <laughs> And Kirsten teaches second grade. Well, it's their grandpa. John the Baptist was his favorite character in the whole Bible, and he wrote a whole book on John the Baptist, and he named my husband after John the Baptist. So he's important. But here's why John the Baptist is important. Because he told everybody about Jesus. He prepared everybody to know Jesus. And we all need to be a little like John the Baptist. We need to tell people about Jesus. So he's a good role model for us. We don't have to eat locusts and honey. We don't have to wear camel hair. But we need to tell people about Jesus, just like John did. Will you pray with me, Noah? Dear God, thank you for people like John the Baptist. And help us tell others about Jesus. Thank you very much for coming up. You can go back with your family. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we begin this sermon this morning, I want, to, I want you to pull out your bulletin and look at the cover. There's a word at the top of the cover, and I'm wondering if, if anybody's familiar with the word epiphany. Is that a word that you study in high school, epiphany? Anybody have to look that up in English class or anything? No? Nope? Okay. Well, epiphany has two meanings, and you probably hear it mostly in church because it's a season of the church year. It's the season we celebrate when Jesus is made known and revealed to the world. And we started out by the day of Epiphany on January 6th with the three kings. And we'll have those three kings. In fact, one of those kings is here at the early service. He's going to be back for the late service and the Christmas program, so it's kind of appropriate. Um, but that's what Epiphany means in the church. Epiphany has another definition already. Also, and that is an epiphany is a moment when we see or understand something in a new or clearer way. Sometimes things are kind of vague, and we figure them out, we have an aha, and it's an epiphany. We see things in a new way and can go in a new direction. I'm reminded of when I had to take statistics, and oh my goodness, there were so many problems I could not figure out. I would have to sit with the teacher, and he would explain them to me, and all of a sudden, boom, I was like, I saw it, I got it, and I looked at it in a new way, an epiphany. You've probably had an epiphany or two in your life. Maybe it was the moment you realized this was the person you love and want to spend your life with them. When this is the career you want to have and what you want to study, or it's time for a change, it's time to retire, it's time to do something new. Epiphanies happen in life, and today we see a very special epiphany that happens for Andrew and Simon Peter and some of the future disciples. And their epiphany is caused by the message John the Baptist 
gives to them and how he points them to Jesus. So let's dig a little closer into what we see. Last week, you heard from Pastor Dave how John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And today, after that event, he is talking to the crowds and telling them about this Jesus that he knows about. And John the Baptist says to probably Andrew and some of these other future disciples that there he is, he's off there in the distance, and he's the one I baptized. And guess what happened when I baptized him? The Holy Spirit came down like a dove, and a voice out of heaven said, You are my child, my beloved, and in you I am well pleased. A holy moment, an amazing moment when the Spirit came and the voice spoke and Jesus' ministry was affirmed. And then John goes on to tell them that this Jesus is greater than I am. You think I'm wonderful because I'm baptizing, but Jesus is greater than I because he can forgive all your sins He will baptize with the Holy Spirit, and he will change your life. John was a wonderful evangelist, a wonderful witnesser, a wonderful testifier to Jesus. So the next day, John is back with Andrew and another one of these disciples, and Jesus actually walks by closer And John says, there he is. There's the Son of God. There's the Lamb of God, the one who will save the world. And of course, Andrew and his friend want to find out more. And so they follow Jesus. They go after him. Now here's what's interesting, is what does Jesus do? He asks them a question. He turns to them and asks them a question. He says, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? When I first read that, it reminded me of how at High V, when you're done with checking out, they always say, did you find everything you're looking for? I mean, it's kind of nice, isn't it? But that's not where Jesus is going. He's not talking about what are you looking for, like some food or something lost. He's wondering what they're looking for in a deeper way. He's wondering what they are hungry for. Is it hope? Are they looking for purpose? He notices there's a longing inside of them. There's something that they're seeking. Do they need their burdens lifted? Are they being held hostage to some anger or bitterness or resentment that's mucking up their life? Is it joy? Is it inner peace? Is it less worry? Jesus asks. Jesus wants to listen to what is on their heart. This is the kind of God we have, one that wants to listen. We also have people here with us today that want to listen, and so I'm going to challenge you. I want you to take a moment. Friends, what are you looking for from your God, from our faith? What are you looking for? What are you hungry for in your spirit? And now I want you to take a moment, think about that. And I want you to share that with someone next to you. Ask them and change, what are you looking for? And let me caution you, not from your church, from your God. The church is the way God gets expressed. But what are you looking for in your heart and your faith? Share, take a moment, listen to one another. Go.
Thank you. Thank you for sharing. We're going to pray about those things in a minute here. But I want to take us next to what the disciples, the future disciples, responded with when they were asked, what are you looking for? They said, where are you staying? Now that really is translated in kind of a weird way, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. Because the word behind the word staying there is a Greek word that really means abide. Where are you abiding? Where are you at? Where can we be with you to look for what we're not quite sure what we're looking for yet? They couldn't articulate it, and it was probably a little difficult for you. But they knew they had a sense that if they could just spend some time with this Jesus, they might be able to discover it, and they might be able to move forward. They want to talk more with Jesus, and that's what they mean when they say, where are you staying? They aren't so much asking where, but how. How can we be with you more? And how can we receive that forgiveness of sins and that salvation that John the Baptist told us about? And Jesus then invites them with these words. Come and see. Come and see. And they follow. Jesus asks questions. Jesus invites and they enter into what had to have been an amazing conversation. Wouldn't you have liked to be there to hear how they talked? I can imagine that Jesus asked them more. What are you looking for? He wants to hear from them, and God wants to hear from us what is on our hearts, what we need to hold more lightly, what we need to lift up to God. And I imagine that Jesus spent some time telling, too. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with TED Talks. There are these little, like, 10-minute talks that are out now. I wonder if he gave them a little TED Talk about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. He might have said something like, to follow me means to love our neighbors. It means to help our poor and our hungry. It means to ask for forgiveness and be given hope. It means that you can be renewed from the weights of past mistakes and lifted up to new energy in following Jesus' example. Somehow, and I'm not quite sure what Jesus said, we can just guess, but in that time with Jesus, Andrew and his friend experienced an epiphany, an aha moment, a change and a turning that sent them into a life of following Jesus. And we know that they experience this because they declare, we have found the Messiah. We have found what we are looking for and what will give us purpose and hope and strength. And we're going to put our feet in front of us and keep following this. I'm sure that Jesus covered a few other things when he talked to them. But if we think about the following days and the following weeks and months when these disciples then spent time going with Jesus and hearing him speak and teach and preach and heal, that they realize that following Jesus may begin with an aha moment or a turn, but it is not finished. It is a journey and a conversation with God that we are invited into. It is not a rose garden where everything is perfect, because following Jesus means there, there's still challenge, there's still suffering. There's still work and effort that need to get put into following. For the fullness of the kingdom of God won't be realized until Jesus comes again. 
Being a follower of Jesus does not necessarily mean that we will be prosperous. Jesus says, blessed are the poor. It does not mean all our trials will be washed away. Sometimes we grow best through trials. It doesn't mean we'll have perfect health or win every game or have the best skills and abilities. But we will have the perfect hope and the perfect example of living a life of servanthood, a life where we can give and a life where we receive when we are continually faithful even if we're not successful. Jesus' kingdom is about God's vision, so each of us can live with an inner peace and hope and then share that with the world. And it is a journey each and every day. We need to spend time with Jesus, with one another and sharing and in prayer, and in listening to God, and letting God listen to us. Yes, we are in the season of Epiphany, and it is a time for us to renew our commitment to following Jesus and being in conversation with God. How will you do that in your life, this Epiphany? How will you lift up what you're looking for and ask God to help you with it? How will you share that with others? And how will you bring the good news to the world? Let's take a moment this morning to pray for what's on your hearts and minds. Let us pray. Lord, this morning I ask that you take the thoughts, the memories, the mistakes, the hopes, the fears and the dreams that are inside of each of us. We lift them up to you. We ask that you would be with each person here in their heart, in their mind, and empower their hands and their lives to show your love as they seek to follow you. Amen. Friends, we are the people of God, and we have been called and gifted to do God's work in the world. May this epiphany we boldly declare, as those disciples did, that Jesus is the Messiah, so all may come and see the joy and meaning that following Jesus will bring to the world. Amen. We sing hymn number 574, and I invite you to stand.
Let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called to be a light to the nations, let us pray for God's justice, peace, and healing. Gather us in, gracious God. Bring together all Christians and faiths. Form us through worship into your united, your united people. Send us out as one in you, proclaiming your glory and serving all. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world. Help us reach those who are suffering. Guide us in justice to bring your gospel and hope to the world. Especially give wisdom to the new leadership of our nation and guide them to good decisions that are consistent with your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Calm the fears of those who wait for test results. Bring hope to those facing difficult times, whether emotionally, physically, or spiritually. We pray especially for Audrey Brosty, Paul Brosty, Noah Bredesen, Dale Nelson, Peter Anderson, Doc Ellenson, Bernie Radloff, Dave Swenson, Ben Andert, and Sandy Cragness. Be with Kristen Anderson at the death of her mother. And we take a moment of silence to lift up our concerns out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers in the name of Christ, the light of the world, who is one, the one with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as it is time for our offering. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Now we join in your unending hymn, The Holy Holy. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it for all to eat, 
saying, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. And Jesus taught us to pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and just a few reminders. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. O morning star, fair and bright, you have refreshed us again with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Go with us now, today, tomorrow, every day, that we tell the story of your never-ending love and sing your praise, both now and forever. Amen. Just one quick announcement as we leave. The Ideas team is doing something fantastic starting this Wednesday. They are going to be having suppers here starting at 510. So if uh, we're kind of starting Lent suppers early, just give everybody a little more chance to spend some time together at church. It's a free will donation. If you have your kids in Wednesday programming, stick around and have supper or come early for choir or whatever else you're going to be here that night. So this Wednesday, it's soup, and uh, look forward to having folks come and enjoy some winter time together. With that, would you stand for our benediction? May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let's join in hymn number 866. And now may you go in peace and be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.